for real solutions. Now, live, this is CBS 4 News at 6. Off the top this afternoon, Ophelia strengthens back into a hurricane off the Florida coast. In Flagler Beach, the pier takes a pounding as Ophelia whips up the waves and crews move in to stop the beach erosion. And further south in Ormond Beach, a similar situation as strong surf pounds the shoreline. Tonight we have the new advisory and future track on Ophelia. CBS 4 meteorologist David Bernard is tracking the tropics live for us from weather control. David. Rob and Maggie, after briefly dropping down to tropical storm status, we're back to Hurricane Ophelia this afternoon, and it continues to move away from the coastline. Looking at the satellite picture over the past 12 hours, a couple things you'll notice. Ophelia is moving further away from the coast, and look at the last couple of pictures. The cloud tops are warming, meaning these purples aren't as prevalent, so any strengthening that's been going on throughout the day looks like that is now once again this evening leveled off. Here is the latest advisory as of 5 o'clock this afternoon, wind 75 miles per hour, and Finally, the storm moving northeast at seven miles per hour. You can see how it moved up here, kind of did a loop and has now moved off to the northeast. That's about 220 miles south southeast of Charleston in South Carolina. So here's the future track and the thinking is not much different. It looks like it's going to kind of mill around over the weekend and then very slowly crawl toward the coast Monday into Tuesday, possibly somewhere around Charleston. But again, the uh, rate of error puts it maybe further down to the south into North Florida or Georgia or further north possibly up into the Carolinas. But right now it does not look like the hurricane is just going to push out to sea. Now what's going to steer the storm? Here is that dip. You see that right there? That's the dip that we were talking about yesterday. It's coming down tonight. It's pulling Ophelia to the northeast, but the dip is going to move out tomorrow and high pressure is going to build in. And that's why we think the storm is going to slow again over the weekend. And once that slowing does occur, that could provide uh, for the storm to push back toward the west again as we go into early next week. Uh, the storm, though, no threat to South Florida. We'll have the rest of the weekend in a few minutes. All right, David, stay with CBS 4 for continuing coverage of Ophelia. Look for the new advisory and future track tonight on CBS 4 News at 11 o'clock. Now, 11 days after Katrina struck the Gulf Coast, we have some breaking news involving the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Word that FEMA has decided to scrap the $2,000 debit card program for evacuees. It's been a shaky day for FEMA. The director of FEMA is being relieved from his duties of managing the hurricane relief effort. Let's get right to CBS 4's Dave Malkoff. He's live in New Orleans tonight with the latest for us. Dave. Yeah, as you were saying, they had that plan to give out those credit cards, those debit cards with $2,000 credit on there, and they are not going to do that at this point. The uh, director of FEMA is no longer here and no longer in charge of this effort. They sent him back to Washington. And you know, FEMA comes under the umbrella of Homeland Security, and today the Homeland Security director for this city actually said the death count may be a lot less than they once previously thought. That's because as they drain the city, they are not seeing the bodies they thought they would. The floodwaters are receding and residents of New Orleans are leaving the city. Police and military are wrapping up their search for the living and only the dead and the diehard remain now. This is the New Orleans Police Department's way of kindly asking people in these homes to get out. You see the chopper is above. They are not taking people by force unless they are packing a gun like this man. He was arrested right there on the spot. Back in Washington, a change at the top of the on-site hurricane relief effort as FEMA chief Michael Brown is replaced by Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen. I'm going to hold an all-hands meeting with everybody in this building. We'll have an open and frank conversation on the way forward, and we will move out. Brown has been under fire almost since day one for the delayed federal response. And now, this Time Magazine article is questioning his resume in the first place, whether he truly had any previous emergency management experience. Has Mike Brown resigned? No. Has the president asked for his resignation today? No. Does the president have full faith and confidence in Mike Brown? Yeah, um, again, uh, what we are continuing to do is to support those all in the region who are carrying out the operational activities. Uh, we continue to appreciate the work of all those who have been working around the clock. 
Help is also coming from Iraq as the Pentagon sends Louisiana National Guardsmen home early. But this will be no happy homecoming. What does he come back to? He doesn't, he doesn't know it yet, but he's not going back to anything. I'm telling nothing. I just told him everything's fine and we just want you to come home. If the new FEMA head's name sounds familiar, Thad Allen, that may remind you of these pictures, the 1999 Surfside 6 scandal, where a group of Cubans were trying to make their way to South Florida shores, but then they ended up claiming that they were manhandled by the Coast Guard, and that man, Thad Allen, the admiral, he was actually head of our region in South Florida. He was head of our region for the, the uh, Surfside 6 scandal. We are live in Louisiana. I'm Dave Malkoff, CBS 4 News. Well, the victims along the Gulf Coast still need your help. If you'd like to donate, give Neighbors for Neighbors a call at 305-597-4404 or toll free at 877-411-4242. Tonight, the list of stars signing up for a concert and telethon to benefit Katrina victims is growing. Kanye West, Garth Brooks, and you too will now join Alicia Keys, Rod Stewart, Paul Simon, and others on stage. Actress Jennifer Aniston will also be on hand for Shelter from the Storm, a concert for the Gulf Coast. It airs tonight at 8 o'clock, live on CBS4 and on our sister station, UPN33. Be sure to stay with CBS4 for the latest developments out of the Gulf Coast region. Look for team coverage tonight on UPN33 News at 10 and right here on CBS4 News at 11. David Bernard is back with your weekend weather forecast. CBS4 News at 6 will be right back. Want more morning news with half the commercials? Starting Monday. That's just what you get from CBS 4 News. Get more big news. With less commercials. More developing stories. With less commercials. More weather and traffic. With less commercials. More reports to keep you healthy and to help you save money too. Get more morning news with half the commercials. And get more of the news you want right now. Only on CBS 4 News this morning. Weekdays from 5 to 7 starting Monday. Impressive. Yeah, thanks. It, it really turned out nice. Uh, especially... We've stocked up. Now, so can you. The tailgating sale. Publix. We're serving you has been our pleasure for 75 years. It's back by popular demand. Modern Age's Labor Day Spectacular has been held over. Enjoy astounding everyday deals, plus an extra 20% off all clearance merchandise. Just click the special coupon in our insert and take advantage of already drastically discounted floor samples and special buys. Make a purchase today and pay nothing for one full year. Don't wait another minute. Hurry into the store that won't be undersold. Modern Age, where beautiful homes cost less. Just announced, the Chevy Employee Discount continues on 05 vehicles and is now available on 06 full-size trucks. From the family of Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, the discount price is right on the window. That's the Chevy Total Value Promise. Right now, get a 2006 Silverado Half-Ton Crew Cab LT two-wheel drive for under 25 one after cash back. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Breaking news, sports, stocks. Get fast solutions every time on Herald.com. If you see news in the making, dial star CBS4 on your T-Mobile cellular phone. Now, CBS4 weather with meteorologist David Bernard. Plenty of dry air across Florida again today as Hurricane Ophelia is staying well to our north. It looks like this pattern is going to stay with us for most of the weekend with little if any rain tonight and into tomorrow as well. In fact, our Truvia will show most of the rain tomorrow will be well up to the north. We're going to see lots of sun with just a little bit of a rain chance. Sunday, about the same story, maybe one or two more showers around. But again, it looks like Ophelia will be well north and east of us, so sunny and hot with just a few showers. And early next week, right now, the most likely scenario is Ophelia makes her move toward the Carolinas, possibly the Georgia coast again, well removed from our weather. We'll look for summery temps 
storms with just a few storms around. Here's your forecast for tonight. Mostly nice, fairly warm, 77 for the low. And for tomorrow, 92, hot sun again with just a small shower chance on the water. Look for winds starting northwest, but east in the afternoon at 10 to 15. Sees 2 to 4 with a light chop. Water temperature today, 85 degrees. Your Sunday forecast, lots of sun, a few showers with a high of 91. That's the weather. All right, David, thanks. That's our news for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 11 for CBS 4 News tonight. It's time now for the CBS Evening News with John Roberts and tonight for Bob Schieffer. Good night. Good night. Good evening, I'm John Roberts. President Bush yanks the top FEMA man out of the hurricane zone and puts an admiral in charge of disaster relief. Full coverage tonight of the devastation on the Gulf Coast. I'm Byron Pitts in New Orleans, where the death toll may not be as high as first fear. Much of New Orleans sits in a toxic soup. The environmental cleanup will be massive. I'm Mark Strassman with that story. I'm Mark Phillips in Holland, where they know about floods and what it costs to stop them. Worried about your heating bills this winter? I'm Anthony Mason. Wait till you see what Katrina could cost you. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. And Bob is off tonight. After more than a week of trying to manage a natural disaster and a political debacle, President Bush made a major personnel change today. Under growing pressure, he ordered the head of FEMA, Michael Brown, to leave the Gulf Coast disaster zone and return to Washington. The president put a military man in charge, Vice Admiral Thad Allen of the Coast Guard. Bob Orr begins our coverage tonight of disaster relief and damage control. Even before hurricane winds began battering the Gulf Coast, there were questions about the federal response and the nation's top emergency managers. On Saturday morning, two days before Katrina struck, Analysts inside FEMA headquarters sounded an alarm. Leo Bosner is a FEMA union leader. We put a situation report out at 5.30 a.m. in big black type saying a catastrophic hurricane is headed straight dead center for New Orleans. And Brown and Chertoff and these people did nothing. As you far warned as the management. Of course we warned the management. This was an impending disaster. Of course. Everybody knew it was an impending disaster except them, I guess. By the time the storm had passed, parts of Mississippi and Louisiana were in ruins and New Orleans was drowning in desperation. Still, cries for federal help went largely unanswered for four days, forcing the president to the region. Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. But Brownie, FEMA Administrator Mike Brown, was clearly the target for blame. People want to lash out at me, lash out at FEMA. I say that's fine. Just, just lash out because my job is to continue to save lives. My job is to continue to try to rescue people, and I'm going to do that. Did you screw this up? No. By today, the answer seemed to be yes. Even as New Orleans struggled with a toxic quagmire, new questions about Brown's qualifications emerged. His White House resume claims Brown was an assistant city manager in Edmond, Oklahoma, with emergency services oversight. Edmond officials say Brown was more like an intern with no supervisory authority. Hours after that story first appeared on Time Magazine's website, Brown was relieved of his hurricane command. Is this the first step in Mr. Brown's resignation? Can you answer that, Mr. Brown? Can you hear the ground rules. I'm going to answer the questions. <clears throat> I've explained what we're doing. I, I thought I was about as clear as I possibly could be in English. Homeland Mr. Security Brown boss Michael Chertoff explained Brown was not being fired, but being shipped back to Washington to prepare FEMA for its next challenge. If Mike Brown could not perform in this disaster, lost the confidence of the American people, why do we think it's going to change? Critics say FEMA's got a bigger problem than just Mike Brown. His two top deputies also have no emergency management experience. They, like Brown, are there because of their political connections and not their expertise. John? Hey, Bob, what's going on with that $2,000 debit card program that FEMA started in Texas? Well, th it's going to end. It's yet another problem. FEMA says it was a pilot program to give $2,000 to each of the hurricane families through debit cards. Well, they say it doesn't work very well. Mm. Now, if you're a hurricane victim not in Texas, you'll have to get it through a direct bank deposit. Of course, some of these people don't have banks anymore. Right, yeah, so they'll still get the money. They just may not be able to find it. 
more paperwork and more time. Right, our Bob, Bob Orr in our uh, Washington Bureau, Bob, thanks. In New Orleans, the focus is shifting to recovering the dead now, and today a city official said it's looking like there may be fewer dead than first feared. He did not give a new estimate, though. Officially so far, there were 118 confirmed deaths in Louisiana, more than 200 in Mississippi, 14 in Florida, and two in Georgia. Byron Pitts reports that as floodwaters recede, we're getting a better perspective on this disaster. For more than a week now, the world has wondered what lay beneath these floodwaters. Today in Moreau, east of New Orleans, came a grim and early glimpse. Sailboats sat where they didn't belong, and cars were left stacked and standing like lawn furniture. But while the images were eerie from the air, rescue teams found encouraging signs on the ground. There's some encouragement in what we found in the initial sweeps that uh, some of the uh, catastrophic uh, death that uh, some people predicted may not, may not in fact have occurred. Perhaps not 10,000 fatalities as once predicted, but a body count still in the thousands. Some water levees have been intentionally breached, allowing flood water to escape. So as nightfall approaches, New Orleans remains a city of the dead and the defiant. Defiance, New Orleans style. Block after block, people here still refuse to evacuate. Really gonna make me move like them. Hog tie me. Yet authorities insist the last survivors will leave eventually and by force if necessary. This is the south side of Lake Pontchartrain. Today on the north side, residents were allowed back in for the first time. What are we supposed to do with this? I've got roofs, I've got boats, I've got, I mean, boats. boats. I have boats back here. Today, Londy Moore's lakefront home looks more like a junkyard. Her house sits on stilts. The neighbor's house now sits in her backyard. There's something dead back here. We don't know if it's a body. And she won't know for out. days, since it's only her, her husband, and a few handymen removing debris. Like her neighbors in parts of New Orleans and elsewhere, the only help she's received from FEMA is a voice on the phone. But the bottom line she told me was that in seven to 10 business days, we will receive in the mail a packet that we have to fill out, and then the process will start. Well, we don't get mail. Lonnie Moore says the only thing she's seen plenty of thus far are cottonmouth snakes. She says unless she receives some kind of federal assistance, she could well go bankrupt. She is not alone. John. Byron, how much uh, longer are officials there going to give people before they do hogtie them and take them out? Well, John, this talk is early as the end of this coming weekend. I think officials have tried as best they can, but the reality is because of so many medical concerns, the diseased water, they realize they have to get people out at some point or they'll have more problems down the road. So I think it'll be two or three more days of Mr. Nice Guy, and then they'll likely start getting tough. All right, Byron, thanks very much. Even as the water level goes down, estimates of the economic damage caused by Hurricane Katrina are rising. A revised estimate today from a private risk assessment firm puts the total cost at $125 billion. That's 25% higher than just a week ago. And then there is the potential health damage from all of that contaminated water. Mark strassman has got that story for us tonight. At his carpeting and tile business, Gilbert Schmidt thought he had seen everything a flood could bring. Water came about right here. But nothing's prepared him for Katrina's unhealthy aftermath. In his store, his home, and flooded houses all over. And the mold had like five different colors, so I didn't know which mold it was. And we had the same thing here in the store and all the other houses we run into. After hell came high water, a nasty toxic broth of raw sewage, petroleum, chemicals, and everything else under the kitchen sink. Some standing water is actually on fire. And in this citywide cesspool, infectious diseases are already a high risk. In one area, Baltimore firefighters showered every vehicle going in or out with decontaminants. Have A and B, tetanus? Everything. Okay. Cops and emergency workers lined up for free tetanus and hepatitis shots. Some of them already have mysterious rashes. So we had decaying bodies, uh, raw sewage, you name it, it's in there. Once these floodwaters recede, the silt left behind becomes the next major worry. Contaminants that could reach the levels of hazardous waste. Imagine that cleanup on this scale. In and around New Orleans, state environmentalists are taking water samples, awed by this disaster's unprecedented scale. Just the massive size of it. Right. 
as uh, well as the potential concerns. Right, long-term potential concerns is, Significant. is enormous. Yeah. In some parts of the city, drinking water may be years away. And wherever water lingers, so do health worries. The longer it stays in the carpeting, uh, all that toxic water and all of it, the longer it stays in there, the worse it's going to be. The Big Easy could now become infamous for its environmental hot spots that could take years to cool down. Mark Strassman, CBS News, New Orleans. Well, after all that bad news, we are pleased to bring you this update tonight on the storm babies, the premature infants that were evacuated from New Orleans to intensive care units in Baton Rouge. Last night, we told you the mothers of all but one of the infants had since been found. Now that last baby's mother has been located. It turns out the mother and her other children were stuck in New Orleans, running out of food, drinking water, and hope when a National Guard boat came by and rescued them. Well, coming up next on tonight's CBS Evening News, taking lessons from the Dutch. If any country knows about flood control, it's the Netherlands. We'll show you why and how it could help New Orleans in tonight's Inside Story. But first, CBS News honors fallen heroes. Joey Tremblay, G.I. Joey, they called him. He was always interested in the military. He became a Marine firearms instructor. Disappointed he wasn't sent to Afghanistan after 9-11, he volunteered for duty in Iraq. Soft-hearted, he had great compassion for Iraqi children. Killed by a roadside bomb, his last call was to his fiance. He told her he loved her and he'd be home soon. So, Doc, let's see what you can do for this poor seasonal allergy sufferer. You're really miserable. I've tried these. They only last about six hours. And all of these make me drowsy. I think this will help. Allegra 180, long-lasting and non-drowsy. Not one of these allergy medicines can give you long-lasting seasonal allergy relief without the risk of drowsiness. But Allegra 180 can. Allegra lasts the whole day and night. For people 12 and over, side effects alone may include headache, cold, or backache. I'll take Allegra any day. Long-lasting Allegra. The relief goes on. Now you see it. Now you don't. Benefiber, unlike Metamucil, it dissolves completely in beverages and is completely tasteless. Now that's Fiberlutionary. Benefiber makes taking fiber easier. Here's a fresh solution in bladder protection. New Serenity Pads from Tenna. With a unique soft top sheet with multi-inlets to absorb liquid faster than before. Serenity feels dry. You feel fresh. I'm not going to let health concerns hold me back. From doing a single lap, doing a single turn. Some multivitamins talk a good game, but Centrum Silver is a specially age-adjusted multivitamin with high levels of B vitamins, which emerging science suggests may help reduce the risk of vascular diseases, including heart disease, and with calcium to help maintain healthy blood pressure. I can't wait for my next gig. My next plunge. Centrum Silver, adjusted for your age and your life. Moms know how to cheat catch right with wholesome food they really like. Campbell's chicken noodle possibilities. Bats that chicken noodles too. Brought that savory tried and true. Campbell's chicken noodle possibilities. Why have hot dogs or mac and cheese? When Campbell's soup is sure to please. Campbell's mm -hmm, good was icy. It was really slippery. We started swerving. I thought we were going to roll over, but we didn't. It stopped us swerving and keep the car straight. Who's going to help you stay in control? When things are out of your control. Someone should. Well, after Katrina, no one is ignoring Ophelia, even though the hurricane moved farther out to sea today, away from the Atlantic coast of Florida. Well, that's because Ophelia is projected to turn around and head back to the east coast next week, possibly striking anywhere from the Carolinas all the way down to Florida. Hurricanes are a fact of life for residents of the southeast and the Gulf Coast, and scientists know that New Orleans will face that threat again sometime in the future. The question is how to hold back the sea. One proven way is... The Dutch way. Mark Phillips says the inside story. This may sound familiar. A storm surge overwhelms a low-lying coastline. Flood barriers give way. 
thousands killed, tens of thousands made homeless. Except this isn't the U.S. Gulf Coast in 2005, it's Holland in 1953. These aren't called the Low Countries for nothing. What the Dutch learned then and how they responded may hold lessons for post-Katrina America. When we have an increased uh, water level of four meters above main sea level, then half of Holland is below water. Half the country is below half water. Half the country. The Dutch response was not simply to shore up the dike system that failed, but to build a new system of outer sea barriers, massive complex structures stretching for miles. It cost about $8 billion, a lot of money for a small country. But the Dutch knew it was a matter of pay me now or pay me later. The choice we have to make here is uh, to give safety to one million people and it costs money, but it's cheaper than afterwards when we have a big disaster and one million people get flooded. The greatest challenge was to protect Rotterdam, yet still allow shipping into its crucial port. The answer was these gigantic and ingenious moving arches that can be swung out into the river and then sunk there to block any incoming storm surge. The Dutch long ago learned that this is really a simple problem. You want to keep the land here and the water out there, you have to spend whatever it takes to build this sort of thing to keep them apart. With climate change, rising sea levels and more severe storms in the future, the Dutch think they'll have to close this barrier every three or four years. In Holland, they think the choice in the U.S. is inevitable. New Orleans, what I know, is also very low. Mm -hmm. So by rising off the sea level, you have to build something. No choice. No choice. Yeah. Or leave the area. The same choice they faced here. Mark Phillips, CBS News at the Meisland Barrier, Holland. You're watching the CBS Evening News, and coming up next, the cost of heating your home. Katrina's impact on what you'll be paying this winter is our Friday Consumer Alert. No. no. I like to redeem my credit card miles. No. 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 Okay. No. Oh, Chubsy. Come on. The answer's always no. That's right. I'm not hearing it. No! 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 Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, anytime. I should have worked at Capital One! What's in your wallet? No! The good news is spreading. Aleve is the number one pharmacist-recommended pain reliever for arthritis for the sixth year in a row. If you suffer from arthritis pain, ask your pharmacist about the good news. Ask your pharmacist about Aleve. Those buffalo are beautiful this time of year. Oh, this just in. Huge crowds at the Ace Hardware Sale. Bob, I think he went to the sale. <laughs> the Ace Alpha Hardware Day Sale. Save 25% on Ace brand tools that fit inside this Ace Toolbox for $4.99. Sale starts Friday. Every day, I see all kinds of people with diabetes. And for everyone, eating right and controlling weight is essential and hard to do. That's why there's delicious Glucerna to have as a meal or satisfying snack. Glucerna's unique blends of slowly digested carbs are clinically shown to help control blood sugar. And with a little exercise, Glucerna may help you lose weight. For free meal plans, visit glucerna.com. It's time for a taste of freedom. It's the all-new mid-size sedan with a luxurious full-size cabin protected by six airbags, standard. More interior space than Camry or Accord. The all-new 2006 Sonata, a Hyundai like you've never seen before. Imagine the possibilities at Robin Stuckey, we believe that all great rooms begin with an inspiration. One wonderful piece of furniture, something special that sparks the imagination and makes you realize this is what it feels like to be home. Visit our extraordinary showroom. We promise you'll be inspired. Robin Stuckey. Your tax dollars at work. It's the biggest relief effort in history. Is anyone watching how those tens of billions of dollars are being spent? We are, and all next week, Cheryl Atkinson tours the disaster zone to see if the aid is getting where it's needed most. Crisis Check on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. 
The first of the Louisiana National Guard soldiers being brought back from Iraq arrived home today, but most of them have no homes to go to. The 100 guardsmen were greeted by Louisiana's governor and a few dozen family members when their flight landed 200 miles northwest of their flooded hometown of New Orleans. Well, it looks like gasoline prices have leveled off after soaring 46 cents in the week after Katrina hit the Gulf Coast to a nationwide average of $3.06 a gallon. The price started falling this week ever so slowly and is now $3.02. That's still $1.18 more than we were paying a year ago. Also a lot more than it was last year is the cost of heating your home, and Katrina gets at least some of the blame for that. Anthony Mason has our Friday Consumer Alert. The dog may not be the only one barking at the heating oil man this winter after you get your bill. Heating oil prices are expected to jump more than 30% in the Northeast. Natural gas prices to soar more than 70% in the Midwest. The signs were they were going to go up anyway, but with Katrina, they're going to go up even more. That's correct. Dave Schildwachter runs a heating oil company in the Bronx, New York. Last winter, he offered his customers a price cap of $1.79. Today, oil is $2.69, so could it go higher? If you asked me this question a year ago, I'd say, gee, $1.79 is crazy. It wasn't so crazy. How long will we be choking on these higher heating bills? It's hard to say. But the damage from Katrina down in the Gulf will be putting pressure on prices for months to come. The green line is the temperature within the building. For 20 years, Steve Mackey has helped run the Metro Dome in Minneapolis. He's expecting at least a 40% jump in his energy costs. This would certainly be the, the largest increase I've seen in my history of working at the stadium. To save money, they may manually remove snow from the Metro Dome roof this winter. How many students do you have here? At 2,500 students. Howard Smith runs the schools in Tarrytown, New York, with five buildings to heat. But you fill that thing up every week? In the peak of the season, yeah. He can't afford a 30% fuel hike. Does that worry you? It does, because we, we can't build that kind of a safety net into our budget. So what's a homeowner to do? Dave Schildwachter says we all need to watch the thermostat and service our boilers. But a, a lot of us have been doing this stuff for the past few winters to try to save money, and there's nowhere to go anymore. Amen. If you thought your bill was bad last year, this winter it's really going to bite. <coughs> Anthony Mason, CBS News, Tarrytown, New York. And still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, repaying a debt from 9-11. New York City's urban search and rescue team is on the Gulf Coast to help out and to say thank you. Tonight, will you be able to catch a great night's sleep? Or will your restless mind keep chasing sleep away? I've got to remember that appointment tomorrow. Did I send the car payment? Introducing Lunesta, a sleep aid that can give you and your restless mind the sleep you need. Lunesta helps most people sleep all through the night and works quickly, so take it right before bed. Lunesta is non-narcotic and approved for long-term use. Of course, do not use sleep medicines for extended periods without first talking to your doctor. Be sure you have at least eight hours to devote to sleep before becoming active. Until you know how you react to Lunesta, you should not drive or operate machinery. Avoid taking Lunesta with alcohol. All sleep medicines carry some risk of dependency. Side effects may include unpleasant taste, headache, drowsiness, and dizziness. Ready to catch a great night's sleep? Just climb into bed and leave the rest to Lunesta. It's frustrating. Just when you're ready to relax, that's when it happens. The urge to move, along with uncomfortable sensations in your legs. They're hard to describe, but they can even keep you from getting to sleep. You feel the urgent need to get up and move just to get some relief. There's a name for it, restless leg syndrome. And if you have it, you're among the nearly one in 10 US adults who do. Wanna know more? Visit restlesslegs.com or talk to your doctor. You've waited, you've dreamed, and now it's finally back. Endless shrimp at Red Lobster. The only time of year to enjoy all the shrimp you can eat. Don't miss endless shrimp right now, only at Red Lobster. I am dedicated, and I'm a diabetic. And that's how I feel when I test with my meter, the AccuCheck Aviva. Designed to fill correctly the first time to make every strip count. The new AccuCheck Aviva system. It was really dark. 
The road was icy. It was really slippery. We started swerving. I thought we were going to roll over, but we didn't. It stopped us swerving and keep the car straight. Who's going to help you stay in control? When things are out of your control. Someone should. Hello, my darling. Your last blossom beckons. Hey, I am so congested. If only my medicine could treat and help prevent these seasonal nasal allergy symptoms. Only Nasonex is clinically proven to both treat and help prevent most seasonal nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion. Only Nasonex. Side effects were generally mild and included headache, viral infection, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. I have returned my flower, a changed bee. For seasonal nasal allergy symptoms, Nasonex is the one to treat and help prevent congestion. Talk to your doctor. How will they create order out of chaos in New Orleans? Find out as Ed Bradley takes us through the battered city. 60 Minutes, Sunday. Well, Sunday is September the 11th, the fourth anniversary of the attacks on America. And at the White House today, President Bush awarded specially created Medals of Valor to the families the of the 442 of firefighters, police officers, and other rescue workers who died in those attacks. The president shared hugs and tears with some people at the ceremony. After 9-11, New Orleans was among the first American cities to send help to New York City. Now, repairing what they see as a debt of honor, hundreds of New York City police and firefighters are at work on the Gulf Coast. Jim Acosta has their story. When storm survivor Russ Anderson met some of New York's finest, he had the perfect tribute in mind. Out in the Mississippi rubble, a sound that became familiar four years ago. We appreciate them. I hope the whole nation does. On September 11, 2001, America came to help New York City. When Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, it was time to give back. And we were getting inundated with phone calls from all, all firemen and policemen that wanted to come with us. Inundated. Inundated. Everybody wanted to come. Right off, guys. Joe Downey leads New York City's urban search and rescue team. Come on, sir. This is their first deployment outside New York since that September morning. The team lost almost everything that day. Rescuers, equipment, and its leader, Joe Downey's father. Do you guys recognize how choked up people still get when they see you? Sure. Uh, the first person we met. She just broke down and cried on her shoulder. Everywhere they go, they are struck by images they've seen before. Just as rescuers across the country answered the call at Ground Zero, they've come to the Gulf Coast. Many of them have not seen each other since around this time four years ago. So dinner becomes a reunion with brothers and sisters from Florida to California. I think we got the Italian guys cooking tonight a time to reflect on the task at hand. We look at this as Mississippi's World Trade Center. Absolutely, it's 100 times worse as far as the geographical area. Uh, 16 acres of uh, land were destroyed in New York City. This is over 150 miles. It's our turn to pay back. For these New Yorkers, the mission has changed, but their sacrifice is always remembered. Yeah, hang in there, bud. Yeah. It'll be all right. Jim Acosta, CBS News, Gulfport, Mississippi. And from talking to the overstretched police and fire departments in New Orleans, the help from across this country is greatly appreciated. And that's the CBS Evening News for this Friday. Later on this evening, CBS will air a benefit for the victims of Hurricane Katrina, Shelter from the Storm, a concert for the Gulf Coast. That's tonight at 8, 7 Central. Bob Schieffer will be back again on Monday. I'm John Roberts in New York. Thanks for making CBS your choice for news. Have a good night and a good weekend. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart. Good jobs. Good people. Great opportunities. Come grow with us at Walmart. Are billions in relief aid getting to those who need it most? All next week, Cheryl Atkinson is on The Crisis Check on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. This is CBS.